the Bible verses. It's in the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 2, verses 1 to 5. Let me read it for you. Therefore, I exhort first of all that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for king and all who are in the authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Amen. I would like to invite everyone to stand up. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you as we wake up in the morning that you give us life and you let us breathe again, Lord Jesus. Father God, we acknowledge your presence as the King of Kings, as the Lord of Lords. Holy Spirit, I invite you in the middle of our service that your presence will remain on us and give us more more convictions to your word hallelujah and we may understand your grace and your love to us that you never never give us condition but your love is unconditional for us hallelujah father god whatever uncleanliness and unworthiness to our life lord we surrender to your to your mercy we surrender to you lord i ask for your holy spirit in the name of jesus to wash us by the blood of jesus from the top of our head to the soles of our feet hallelujah so that we may be worthy to come to your throne hallelujah hallelujah father god i ask for your presence lord jesus hallelujah let your fresh anointing hallelujah to everyone through this service from our worship leader to our pastor to of my brother and sisters that come here lord honoring your presence hallelujah bless us with anointing with healing hallelujah with financial breakthrough to everyone hallelujah and most of all lord we desire to grow to your word lord jesus unitedly in your spirit hallelujah hallelujah father god i thank you i thank you from the bottom of our heart hallelujah jesus we proclaim the victory of your word in our life hallelujah that we will grow that we even more even more working to your presence to be to be your to be one of your hey, hallelujah jesus to be your faithful servant in the name of jesus hallelujah hallelujah to my brother and sister i thank you hallelujah everyone says amen amen, amen. i want to invite you guys to stand and pray with me lord we welcome into you we welcome your presence in this place right now god Lord, our only focus is on you. Our only focus is on pleasing you and living, Lord God, our lives according to your word. Lord, we come here today, Lord God, asking your spirit, asking you, Lord God, to personally, God, move us into place, shift our souls, align our spirits with yours, Lord God. In this moment, Lord God, use this time of worship, God, to bend us to your will. Speak to us softly and kindly, Lord. The things that you have for us today, Lord God, you, you said that in your word, God, that your thoughts are more, more bountiful for us than the sands in the sea, than the hairs on our head, Lord God. You think of us more than all those things, Lord. And Lord, we take this moment, Lord God, to set aside everything else, return the favor back onto you, and look on you. Thank you, Lord God. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, everybody, let's say amen. 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 clouds. 
is coming on the clouds. Kings and kingdoms will bow down. Amen. Every chain will break. Every chain will break. It's broken hearts declare his praise. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before him. God is the lamb, the lamb that was slain. For the sins of the world, his blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Oh, every knee will bow before him. Amen. Let's sing, open up the gates. Open up the gates. Make way before the king of kings. Amen. He has come to save. A God who comes to save is he to set the captives free. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before him. Our God the lamb that was slain for the sins of the world his blood breaks the chains every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb oh every knee will bow before him amen every knee will bow tongue confess Sing it with me, church. Who can stop the Lord? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Oh, that's right. No one. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow. before the lion and the lamb oh every knee will bow before lost but he brought me in his love for me oh his love for me who the sun who the sun sets free oh it's free indeed i'm a child of god yes i At last he has ransomed me, his grace runs deep. 
Oh, while I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. Oh, the sun sets free. Oh, it's free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. My father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. I am chosen. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. Are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am who you say I am. Who the sun sets free. Oh, it's free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. My father's house. In my father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Let's say who the son who the sun sets free. Come on, he's free. He's free indeed. That's me. I'm a child. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am in my Father's house. Come on, there's a place, a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Church, let's sing it together, Lord. Oh, we are yours. We are yours forever, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we bless your name. We bless you, Lord. sing is free indeed I'm a child of God yes I am my father's house in my father's house there's a place for me I'm a child of God yes I am one more time, I'm a child. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Amen. 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 That's powerful words right there. Some powerful words to speak to your own soul. Just speak it to your own soul. Speak it to your own spirit. 
Maybe there's some of you who don't feel like you're a child of God. Maybe you think like, I've done so much wrong. I've done so much sin. I've knowingly committed so many sins against God and against His Word. Well, guess what? When you come to Him, you don't have to come to Him with guilt or with shame. He says, hey, as long as, as, long as you give me your heart right now in this moment, you are my child. You are my son. You are my daughter. I don't care about your past. I care about your presence. Where are you right now? Lord, we make our heart, our soul right with you right now, Lord God. It doesn't matter what we've done yesterday, a week ago, an hour ago, five minutes ago. As long as we come before you right now in this moment with our heart, you call us your son. Thank you for your grace, Lord. Thank you for your grace, God. That's amazing, your amazing grace. Jesus, amen. Isn't God good, amen? Amen. Sing amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved, that saved a wretch like me. Come on, church, let's sing, I once was lost. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Amazing grace. Oh, amazing grace. How sweet, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like can see you now. Come on. I can see the love in your eyes. Laying yourself down. Raising up the pieces all these pieces broken and scattered in mercy gathered mended and whole empty-handed empty-handed but not forsaken I've been set free I've been set free Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind. I can see you now. Come on. I can see the love in your eyes. Laying yourself down. Raising up the broken. Take our failure. Take our failure. You take our weakness. You set your treasure 
in jars of clay. So take this heart, Lord, I'll be your vessel, the world to see your life in me. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost. I once was lost, but now I am found. Was blind, but now I see. I can see you now. I can see the love. I can see the love in your eyes. Laying yourself down. church save the wretch like me oh, I once was lost but now I am found was blind but now I see I can see you I can see you now I can see the love in your eyes. Come on. Laying yourself down. Raising up the broken to That's the beauty of grace. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I pray that God would give you a revelation of his mercy and grace. His profound love for you like no one else. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone. You can be seated. I watch myself with getting older because there is a tendency. I've seen it when I watch the people grow old, to want to talk about how it used to be. Well, there's some value in it. So I'm applying how it used to be for the local church. This is tithes and offerings um, invitation, but I'm really giving a plug for the local church, the support of the local church, because it's a package. It is your presence, your prayers, your fellowship, your ministry to each other, and the financial. And it, it really always goes together. If you're, if you're not getting in on all of it, you won't, get on, you won't be interested in giving. But about the local church, I think everyone uh, knows that there's a lot of detachment from it, maybe not in all parts of the world, but it's spoken of in our country. And um, <clears throat> how it used to be, everything you got from God, you got from your local church. Now, of course, I was a child, that's part of the memory, but it was largely so. This was, of course, there was no virtual. And it was a very special occasion to hear of people that were doing things 
elsewhere, a special thing if a missionary came or spoke, or really um, the moves of God, you know, that are brought by visiting evangelists, that was even a, a rare o o occurrence. Um, so something else has happened now, we can't go back. But like, if anyone wants to know how the old days were, how the old fashioned days were, ask me. So I could, I could um, wax eloquent on it for a long time. But anyway, uh, everything is big in America. It's not just Texas. So I'm gonna give the example because our small number of our church went on a traveling journey to t Kentucky, and we went to see a very big ministry. It reaches people, I mean, millions of dollars, it's making an impact, and that is the Noah's Ark and the Creation Museum, and their teachings and um, hearkening, even if you're not 100% understanding of the dilemmas of science, you can understand that they're giving the Bible worldview. It's very impactful. But I'll, I'll tell you, as one of the people who traveled, um, <clears throat> it's not what I remember about the trip the most. So, uh, and in fact, henceforth, if I want to learn more about creationist science, I'll go it online. You know, that's how I, it'd be easier to get it, information that way. Uh, but anyway, it was a very big arc. And um, once you've seen it, you'll never forget it. But the most uh, thing I wanted to ponder in my heart and brood over was another experience that was a local church. So we happened to have been welcomed and hosted by a lovely family and... Um, This was in the country, the real country people of Kentucky. So the, I can't tell the whole story of everything, but um, we had our day to go and visit at his church that he had come later in life. He'd been pulled out of retirement to pastor a church. So the fact of the matter is, we always say the church isn't the building. It's the people. But we went on that day to that church, and you know, I felt like it was the building. The God always has a house that he um, creates in. And the history was 100 plus years old house, uh, church, and the building. But the story of it, which w that was so compelling, because these old buildings become a burden if there's not a lot of money or funds to uphold them. So they, and the church members ship dwindles. And in fact, that's what had happened. I don't know, but it had to have been a real person who'd been the last pastor at the church. So there was one day, there had to have been a last day in real life that that person, that pastor, left that church pastorless. I don't, I don't know how many people he left, but eventually there were six that continued on as the local church. And um, so, <clears throat> as Jesus says when he speaks to those who are holding a candlestick of the churches, I still have some names in Sardis who are holding. So there were six people that held the church for three and a half years, conducting a service of some sort, though not, not one of them was being raised up to be the preacher. Um, but they did what they could, and they had song, and they had worship, and they passed the offering plate. And they continued to give into the church. So, uh, and believe. And it wasn't like there was a shortage of churches in the area as we drove through. There are lots of Christian churches. So you can imagine any amount of thoughts or arguments could come into the minds of these six people as to why this might not be necessary. I don't know what their art, what, how they processed. 
but they did stand and maintain their local church because as long as they had the candlestick, it would remain. So it was wonderful to see how the um, church was blessed then. The, a pastor who visited only eventually became their pastor, and the church has doubled in size. And the pastor said, I think it was, these people had really done well with their offering in those three and a half years. They had quite a good bank account, he said. So as I say, the commitment to the local church, there is a lot of competition for it, and which is just the day we live in. Uh, but something is being done in the little places and the places where there is this tie that binds and we can feel like it's to each other, but it's to something that was established in the spirit. And it's not of our decision, but God can't sustain things if we don't do our part. So uh, that really um, was my experience of the trip. And we only got to meet one of the people because she had to be called to bring the keys so we could go in. But indeed, I wouldn't go back to see the Noah's Ark again. I can, I can see that online. But I would like to go back and see the 12 people. Maybe when a year from now, they'll be 24. And actually, it gets that way with traveling. You know, so I understand how that's all we kind of look at when we're traveling is all those evidences like we were noticing as we went from state to state, differences in how prominent uh, a billboard would be proclaiming like a word of the Lord or a uh, heaven is real, hell is real, different things. And, uh, you know, you, you go through and you just start counting how many churches. And um, that is something to travel for. So... Um, There's no interest in giving to God if you aren't connected to what you're giving to. And the thing about the local church is um, it really is the place where everything here gets acted out. Amen. I, could, I won't say more. Enough. Thank you, Lord, that you've held our church the numa church together yes, and Lord. it's not out of pride for those that have been the backbone to take but they should be honored because when people need the church they need the church Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Wow. Powerful message right there. Uh, powerful exhortation. Um, that's, that's a blessing. Thank you, Valerie, for, for that. I was with Valerie on that trip, and it, it is powerful. And, of course, Brian here. And, you know, this man as well is uh, somehow I can see how committed he is. Even without children today, he's still here. <laughs> he's our teacher, but um, definitely God has a purpose. He's probably had the time to break and, and hear the word of God today. So rather, than, But he's there no matter what. Whatever it takes, he will do whatever it takes that God called him to do. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, that's a commitment. I, uh, Lord, I just want to thank you for this time. I just want to... Lift up your name on high. Today is the day that you have made for all of us. We want you, Lord, to speak to us today, Lord, more and more of who you are. And for us, O oh Lord God, to keep going and to do what you have called us to do. Lord, we want to embrace your love and your grace. Today, we said, Lord, we surrender. 
We come to you in, in, in our humility, in our humbleness, O Lord God, in our heart, O Lord, saying, apart from you, we can't do nothing. I myself personally said, apart from you, I can't do nothing. I, I, I surrender. I give everything to you, Lord, and cover me under your wings as I speak the word, not by might nor by power, but by your spirit, who will speak to us today. I pray all of this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen and amen. 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 So today we're going to keep continuing to our series, and now we're in the book of Ephesians. So the, the letters of Paul to the Ephesians, and understanding that more, uh, we got some a little bit of review uh, from last time that I've been discussing about the book of Galatians or the, the letters of Paul to the Galatians. And the letters of Paul to the Galatians talks about the gospel of Christ, the gospel in the family of Jesus and Abraham. The gospel transforms by the presence and power of the Holy Spirit and Christ lives in us. So these are the, the points of the, the, the purpose uh, the very purpose, actually, of, of Paul uh, giving all this uh, statement that uh, he put on to those uh, letter, uh, number one thing that is essential, that Christ lives in, his, in us, the essential is the, the truth of justification by faith rather than by human words was being denied by the Christian legalistic Jews who insisted that Christians must keep the Mosaic law but the truth is we are justified because of our faith in Jesus, right? And our trust and devotion to Jesus, uh, faithfulness to live and die in our behalf. That's Jesus did. The law, as good as it is, does not provide the power to change what the law cannot do. Jesus Christ, our Lord, fully accomplishes, right? There, there are so many laws that we know and definitely... Uh, can do. Justified means declared what? Declared righteousness. Uh, there you go. Declared righteousness or righteous and to be righteous is not by our work or following the law of Torah. But when we call, we can all be good and follow the law, but being good, it doesn't mean you are righteous. Right? So how many people, they say, I'm good. Yeah. But when you, when you see the stop sign, on the road, you didn't even stop. You roll, <laughs> you roll to keep driving, right? So that's your good. Yeah, but little, little, little things like that you can't follow, right? But because nobody sees you. Righteous is different, right? So even not somebody or nobody sees you, you will do what is good, right? And it's, and it's done. <laughs> it's going to be done. So righteousness is walking and living in the Holy Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit manifests in our lives, which is love. And when you have love, what you have possess is patience, joy, kindness, so on and so forth. You will never get tired to forgive others because you are not the one who forgives or love, but God is. When it says Christ lives in you, that means He's the one that forgives. It's the one that gives love. It's the one that gives kindness, patience, and uh, everything that you might don't want to do. The flesh might not want to do that, but because Christ lives in you, there's conviction through the Holy, by the Holy Spirit inside of you saying, don't do that. Or the flesh make decision that, I won't do that. There's the conviction. There's power in me that works, right? So that is what is all about the epistles. But if you look at the difference between the, the letters of Paul, of Gal between Galatians and Ephesians, you might want to look at that uh, like this. So the Galatians, the letter of Gal Galatia is all about the gospel of Christ, showing what is the gospel of Christ. What is the truth? The gospel in the family of Jesus and Abraham. So, you know, the fulfillment of, of the blessings that came from Abraham, Jesus is the one that accomplished those blessings. That, remember that word, I will bless you 
and so that you will be a blessing, not just only to your country, but to many nations. And that's where the accomplishment through Jesus Christ never been accomplished by the Jews, <laughs> right? But uh, here, the gospel transformed by the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. And then Christ lives in me. So it is no longer I that lives in me, but Christ lives in me. Now the difference is this. Number one, in if the letter of Ephesians is all about the gospel of Christ. And the gospel of Christ here is to understand the grace, to understand the gospel, understanding grace. And Paul emphasized the grace of God. What is, un what is grace? It's all about. And then unity in the gospel, unity in the grace of God, unity in Jesus Christ. And then in chapter 6, the gospel and the armor of God and saying the warfare. We have the war. I mean, if you believe that we have the war to face every day in our lives, right? And, and this, is, this is what it's all about. You know, the letter of the Ephesians Intended that all who long for Christ like maturity and discipline needed to develop into the, chil in the true children of God. I mean, if you wanted to be matured and wanted to grow in Christ, wanted to grow in your faith, Ephesians is good for you to read, for you to understand. <laughs> if this is the letter for you. If you wanted to be matured, you wanted to be disciplined, a uh, little bit of discipline about being, you know, a human or living in this world, you know. The aim of this epistle is to confirm and to equip a maturing church. It presents balanced view of the body of Christ and its importance in God's economy. It will help to fortify and to establish the believers so that they can fulfill the purpose and calling God as given. You know, Valerie mentioned a while ago about those six people that stood up, right? No matter what happened, whatever it takes, I will stand for my faith and I will not give up to what God called me to do wherever it is. So that it is. The epistle is pertains our uh, standing in Christ and it emphasizes the warfare of, or the struggles of the saints. As followers of Christ, we must fully understand who God declared us to be. Do you understand your identity, who you are in God? That's, this is what Ephesians is all about. Now, to begin with, uh, as I said, there's uh, understanding grace. This is the story of the gospel, or the gospel story, what, what, is, what is the, the gospel is all about. And the gospel is all about the grace of God. And for us to understand the grace, first, we must to acknowledge the works of the Father, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus Christ together. Oh, there's three God. No, there's one God. There's a triune God. There are three person in one. And this must acknowledge by understanding grace for us to see and understand the grace of God. So Christ is the wonderful, wonderful grace of God through him, our relationship with God restored. Through Jesus Christ, now we become a child of God. Through Christ, we are redeemed and chosen. Remember that song a while ago, right? Believing in him, we are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Do you know? I just summarized the chapter 1 of Ephesians right here. And chapter 2 and chapter 3. So let, let's start with, begin with verse 3 right there. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly place in Christ. Just as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love, having predestined us to adoption as Son by Jesus Christ, to in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should. That we should himself, uh, uh, sorry, himself according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, 
by which he made he made us accepted in the beloved. There you go. That it says. And in verse 7, it says, in verse 7, it says this. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin, according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, that in dispension of the good pleasure, uh, dispension of the fullness of the times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which is our, are in heaven and which are on earth in him. In him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him, who works all things according to the counsel of uh, counsel of his will, that, he, that we who first trusted in Christ should be the praise of his glory. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. There you go. Who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the, to the praise of his glory. Wow. And you know, that is the work of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And, and the center here is that how God did the unification or the united uh, as one, you know, become no matter you're Gentiles or, or Jews, whether you're circumcised or uncircumcised, whether you have the law to follow or not, you know, come uh, Jesus Christ is the one that uni unified those people, like me, you, how many people here that we are all came from different, different uh, <laughs> backgrounds, maybe race, you know, Caucasian, Asian, we'll never know, like there's some uh, African, American, Latinos, things like that, they, and we come together because of Jesus Christ. And this is the unification. And to tell you, um, unity of everything under the Messiah, that is the grace. We can't be united unless there is grace. Understanding grace. Now, for me, to understand grace, you must experience grace. You must experience the power of grace. You must know what is the power of grace. And let's see and find out in Ephesians chapter 2, this is the power of grace. If you have the book with you or not, you don't have to, but that there's right there that written. But God who is rich in mercy because of his grace, love, with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly place in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith and not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus, for good works, which God prepared beforehand, that we should walk in them. And to me, the way I look at that, definitely Christ is the grace. Do you believe? Do you agree with me? Christ is the grace of God, our Father. He is our peace. He is, our, is, the, our, is the cornerstone of our faith. Through Him, we became citizens of heaven. And became a dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Through that grace, the Holy Spirit will dwell in you. Amen. How many people here say, Amen, I have the grace of God? Amen. 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 What about those people around us outside? They might not have the grace of God. Now, I'm going to tell you about these things. 
many people having a hard time understanding grace is. Because I've seen a lot of people in this world or people around me, you know what? God is merciful. He can forgive me. That is true. And God loves me. That is true. Come on. No matter who you are, God loves you. God is merciful God. And people just like, okay, God is merciful, but I cannot forgive. He killed my brother. I will not forgive him. I need justice. Mercy is what people ask God for, not grace. Now, understanding grace, to tell you the truth, in the, in the history that we've been talking about, this is the series, the history of Jesus. This is the series of the story of Jesus from the very beginning, from Adam to, the, to Abraham, to promise of the blessing, to Moses that given by the law, and to those prophets, to those judges, to those kings that bringing the law of God, which is the law is the mercy of God. For all of us. We did understand through the Galatians that what is the law is. The law is guidelines. Just simply a guidelines for us to be protected, for us to be benefited when we do it. And that is the mercy of God. From the very beginning, when Moses bring the law to the people of Israel, they received mercy from God. Because they could easily ask God for forgiveness and God will forgive. But the problem is that they keep repeating. They, they keep repeating their sin. Right? God forgive me. I'm forgiving you. Okay. And then next year or maybe next month I will do it. You know, this one thing. Today is the same thing. Many Christians proclaim they are Christian. I grew up in a, in a place that are a bunch of those people. They do it. You know, I mean in the Philippines, right? I've seen people, they're asking only for the mercy of God, but not the grace of God. You know why? People cut themselves and make them bleed for asking for forgiveness of their sin. And then the next day or maybe that day after they're doing that asking for forgiveness then they will do it again sin after sin Kuya Bonnie my brother-in-law he told me last Thursday you know I grew up in a place that he said when I had when I have been feel guilty and condemned about what I've done I confess to the priest and then the priest telling me pray for Three Our Father, three Hail Mary, and then you're done. You're good. And then the next day I will do it again because I pray those things anyway. That's what we are asking for. We're just asking for mercy but not grace. Now to tell you what is the difference between mercy and grace. There are two words. They said, oh, they're the same. Isn't it God merciful? Isn't it God gracious? Yes. They are both. God is merciful, God is gracious. gracious. But they're different words. They have different level or category of knowing uh, words that mercy, words that grace belongs to. Now, this is the difference between mercy and grace, to tell you the truth. Mercy, I don't know if I have it here. No, I don't. Okay. <laughs> no, this is, this is for me. Mercy is for everyone, even without asking, it's already given. Why did I say that? Like, for instance, you want justice in your life. If you want justice, in your, if you want justice today, all of us are dead. Because all of us committed sin. You want justice? 
You want justice that someone, your brother, somebody killed your brother? You want justice for that? Even you. If you want justice, it will, God will bring justice. But you see, God is merciful. He loves us so much. Every day, the moment I wake up, I feel the mercy of God in me. Psalms 106, he said, there are new every morning. The moment you breathe, mercy of God comes. The moment you wake up, you realize, oh, I'm alive. That is mercy of God for you. But the difference is this. Mercy is already given to all of us children of God and even not the children of God. Because people asking me, how can that person, it's a, it's a wealthy, filthy, wealthy man, but he doesn't even believe in God. You know what? That is the mercy of God for him. Maybe through that, maybe he will find who Jesus and who God is. Maybe that's the work of God for him to realize who God is. But grace is different. It is available for everyone to have it. You ask for mercy. You ask for mercy. You choose for grace. That's the difference. I ask for mercy of God, but I will choose grace of God. I'll keep for, I keep doing this. You work for mercy, just like what the other people does, you know, that, that other people do. They cut themselves, you know, and asking God for forgiveness or do whatever, you know, for do pilgrimage. Do in the Philippines they kneel down and and you know <laughs> uh, they kneel. <laughs> They kneel down and pray, you know, and then they'll start crawling to ask for forgiveness and to ask for mercy of God. But the grace, you don't have to work for it. Right? So that's the difference. You ask for mercy, but you don't ask for mercy. You work for, for mercy, but you don't work for grace. Now, in order for us to understand this more and more, let's see the power of grace. What I'm talking about is this. For this reason, I, Paul, he says, I'm a, the prisoner of Christ Jesus for you Gentiles. If indeed you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which was given to me for you, how that by revelation he made known to the mystery, as I have briefly written already, by which when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known to the Son of Man, and is now been revealed by the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets, that the Gentiles should be fellow hearers of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ through the gospel, of which I became minister according to the gift of grace of God is given to me. Now, the power of grace is in Ephesians 3, right? Uh, is this the one that I'm talking about? Yeah, okay. So, the power of grace is this, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with, the fullness, with all the fullness of God. Amen. That is the power of, of, of the grace of God. Amen. Now, this is our story. In, in, in to him, you know, we can, we is able to be exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask for to think according to the power that works in us. To him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generation forever and ever. Amen. So this is our story right here. Our story that Paul emphasized the unity, unity in the gospel. It is relationship with God and we become family we become uh, Christ family 
and we have the relationship with one another through Christ. Now, the, the, the story in this particular thing, it, why is that important in, 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 in what we're talking about, about the gospel and our relationship for one another? Paul emphasized the unity. Now, this is also pertaining to the grace, right? It also pertaining to the grace uh, because this is, this is what we called um, something that we can look up to as a Christian today, that, that to love one another and to be united. As what Paul says, he says in, in, in chapter 4, verse 1, you know, that we are one body. That we are, the true grace, we become one body. True grace, we become, we have this one spirit, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, above all and through all and all in all. And now, to tell you, unity, again, it, it does not uniformity. Now many people kind of thinking that oh, when you are united, that means you are all together the same. No, we are united here. Look how many color skin that you are here, <laughs> right? We have black, we have white, we have brown people, but we are united, Amen. right? The same thing in every aspect. We have teachers, we have pastors, we have evangelists, we have, we have media people, we have worship people that lead us. That is, I call unity, or I would say this, unity out of diversity in Christ. I've never seen united people without Christ. United States of America, America became united because all the states belong and believe in, in Christ. I believe that. That is the foundation of, of America. Mm -hmm. They become united because of Christ, because of their belief in Christ. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So, as what Paul says here, but, but to, each one of, to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift, and he himself gave some of Gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors, and some teachers. You know, and to me, uh, for us, we have that talking about the, that, that with this, you know, it's hard to balance everything. Sometimes we had a moment to deal with our differences. Even husband and wife, they can be united because they have differences, right? But again, uh, I was just counseling these people that I'm going to officiate their wedding on the, on the 22nd and then and the 9th of September. I, I was telling them, I said, so what is the key for, for you to, un to, to be united, to be one? And they said, they said communication, yeah, there you go. That's number one. That is the language of love. Communication is essential. But what else? Well, we need to, to serve, to respect each other, to understand each other. So that what is just, and to serve each other, something like that. And, and, and that's where I kind of point out this is what, this act of love that you just said is actually mentioned in the Bible. You know, if you look at 1 John 3, 18, let us not love in his speech or in words, but in action and in truth. In truth means no matter what, you got to understand <laughs> her. No matter what, you got you to gotta love her. No matter what, you got to uh, respect him. Right? Respect her. And no matter what, you got to serve her. You know what is that? You know, put the love into action. And what does that mean? 
to understand each other, just like a couple. Oh, my, my wife is so busy today, and it's got something to do for errands. And I see a, a dish, a, a wash, to, a, 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 to, a dish to wash for me to wash. So maybe I will wash those dishes for her. That is understanding. That is, that is commitment. That is serving. Right? And for us, as a Christian, you know, you should look for each other. In you may, uh, that is because we are now new. This is the grace that God has given us. That the grace is understanding grace is, is just like a, a warfare too. A warfare. We do have things that we need to, uh, you know, to, to fight for. Sometimes we have the struggle in, in order for us to understand people, in order for us to, why is he doing that? Why is he like this? You know? And that's what you need to come up with that called, we call it warfare. Okay? But for us, when we have the grace, it is no longer us that we live, right? That's what I just said, in Gal- as what Paul says in Galatians. But to understand more of a, of a new purpose and task and new, mul- and new thing about who we are is this. Uh, it come out with this old versus new. This is where we used to be. The old used to lie, right? So instead of lying, speak the truth. That's the new. That's the grace. These are the people that are under grace. Anger. Instead of anger, instead of arboring anger, they peacefully resolve the conflicts. Peacefully resolve the conflicts. Instead of stealing, they the 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 people that are have grace. I called they gen- become generous. Instead of stealing, instead of gossiping, people will be en- will will encourage. Right. Instead of getting revenge, what you should do? Forgive. Instead of gratifying every sexual impulse or promiscuity, new people that have grace cultivate self-control. S- cultivate sem- self-control of their bodily desire. Instead of getting drunk, New humans come under the influence of God's spirit. Mm-hmm. Right? And, and to me, that this Christian must be like, as what Paul emphasized in Ephesians chapter 5, Christian must walk in love, walk in light, walk in wisdom, walk in the marriage of Christ and the church. Mm-hmm. And for us to be able to look all of these things, to, you know, what's going on, you know, in our mind every day. As I said, there is a war. There is a war right there. And Paul says that. And in even dealing with other people, like me, every day, dealing with different kinds of people, right? But you need to know, you need to know that there is Holy Spirit in you that is not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit who, who works in you and for you to be empowered. And then many people believe, how many of you uh, heard about spiritual warfare? Right? And spiritual warfare, people just like, oh, h- how is that going to be like? You know, oh, you just pray and, and battle against with the spirit. You know, as what Paul says in Ephesians chapter 6, right? That's what he says that. In Ephesians chapter 6, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. And Paul, uh, I'm not going to tell everybody, uh, I'm not going to explain everyone, <laughs> everything here. But Paul emphasized the full armor of God. You know, he put the belt of truth, uh, salvation, helmet of salvation, the word, the sword of truth, you know, which is the word of God. So he, he put all of those things. Now, even if you have all of those things, 
What is more important is to understand before you even come into the warfare is to understand, first of all, is the grace. Well, understanding grace is knowing your identity in God. Do you know that? That's why I just said a while ago, a little bit, I'm, I'm trying to explain now. Understanding grace is knowing who you are in God. Knowing your identity, who you are in God. You are a child of God. Because of that grace, you become a child of God. Now, you can't be on that warfare if, if, if you don't have any, if you don't know anything about or understanding of who you are or, your, or the grace is. Now, to me, in my conclusion, is this. Understanding grace is just like this. Asking forgiveness to the Lord is essential, but what is more important to God is repentance. Jesus said, go and sin no more. Remember that guy, that lady that committed adultery, and people tried to stone her, but they asked Jesus, what do you think? And Jesus said, those of you who did not commit sin is the first one who stoned her. And no one did, because everyone, <laughs> everyone is their sin. And then Jesus lady approached Jesus and Jesus told her, asked her did someone stone you? And then the lady said, no my Lord. And then here you go. Jesus said with full of authority so do I. I will not. You know, Jesus had the right to stone her because he never sinned. But he said so do I, I will not. What is that thing? What does that mean to us? What does that mean to you? What does that mean to me? That is the mercy of God. That is the mercy of Jesus to that lady. So do I, I will not stone you to death. Now, grace is going to come after mercy. And this is what the grace comes. Go and sin no more. Now, do you understand what His grace is? God is full of mercy. I'm still alive because of the mercy of God. I'm forgiving. I'm forgiven because of the mercy of God. But the grace of God leads me to repentance. The grace of God leads me to salvation. The Israel people in the Old Testament, they don't understand the grace. They I do understand the mercy of God. But when Jesus Christ came, He put the grace. He, he let the people understand. He revealed the mystery, the hidden mystery. And that is the grace of God. For us to see today, all these people around us that never received Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and Lord of their life, they don't have grace in their life. And they need salvation. I myself, understanding is not enough for me to ask God for mercy, but for me to embrace and believe in that grace, to have that grace in my life for me to be saved and for me to be righteous, not just only to be good person, but to be righteous because everyone can be good, as I said. We're not perfect, we're not holy, as I said before, that the church is not a museum of saints, but it's a hospital for sinners. We invite, I myself, I'm, I need healing. I need healing. And what I need healing for is for me to be healed spiritually. 
to sin no more. How many people, they don't know their identity in Jesus. So be careful and watch out. We have the warfare going on, right? But to understand what this warfare is all about, or in order for us to go to that fight or to that battle, make sure you know your identity in God. Right? How many people just go to the battle but they don't even understand or they don't even know who they are in the Lord? You have no, no weapon to fight back. Knowing our identity as a child of God is necessary in warfare, to tell you the truth. You know why? Because that is your weapon. That is your weapon to, you know, not just only to defense. The armor of God is for you. It's your defense, you know, like from the enemy. But your weapon truly is, is, is the truth, is the grace of God, is the word of God. That is your offense to the enemy. And knowing your identity in God is your offense to the enemy. When the enemy tells you you are ugly, you are, you are filthy, you are sinners, and you know what? You're going to come back. Jesus forget all of those to me. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, He paid all of those things. He removed all of those things in my life. Now I'm a child of God. So you can turn back to Satan. Don't even tell me that because I'm a child of God. No, you're going to die. No, I'm not going to die. I will live forever because Jesus is in me. No, you're not going to be healed. No, I will be healed because by His stripe I am healed. Did you see me? Did you hear me? This is your identity in the Lord. This is, you should know who you are in God. From the very beginning, you know, before you even come to warfare, you know, the battleground is, is here in your mind. That's the battleground. Satan put all these things, the enemy put all these things in your mind. The struggles, the problem, the curse, everything. He put that in your mind. He put those things in security, rejection, pride. He put all that in your mind. In order for us to battle, you need to know who you are in God. If you are, if you know your identity with God, and then the enemy try to put insecurity in your mind, oh, you're not like as good as Brian. And tell the enemy, I'm a child of God. And I love Brian. I thank God that he's good or he's better than me. That's not insecurity. That is security. Did you hear me? That is what it's all about. One of the great examples today is the people that looking for acceptance. Their advocacy said, no one accept us. We don't have any equal rights. The same as male and female. We are transgender. We are lesbian. We are gay. No one accept us. The church don't accept us. That is not true. I said, here, this church, we accept all kinds of people. Whatever you believe, we, you are welcome here. But this is my problem. This is the problem, not my problem. This is the problem. You want me to accept you? But first, accept who you are don't just tell me i will please accept me love me yes i love you i accept you but this is my thing please accept who you are god created you this way not that way that you think of you hear me many people they're trying to be accepted but they they cannot accept who they are i want your love i want your love 
But first, love yourself. I want respect. Respect yourself first. I want acceptance from you. Then accept yourself. Don't say that I am a woman that I'm in prison in a man's body. That is not acceptance. I love you. But you have to accept yourself. God created you to be. Today, the same thing for all of us. Maybe we have the warfare in our lives. Maybe there's something that you cannot accept, that you cannot admit to your life. Then, first, you got to know your identity in Christ, your identity in God. Knowing who you are in God is essential in warfare. And understanding grace is your power to overcome those things that is not essential, that is not for you. I thank God that I myself, by just simply understanding grace, I came to the Lord and say, God, here I am. Send me. And I want to give that grace for people to understand, not just saying Jesus loves you, but put those words into action. Simple as that. Coming to a person that needs help to drive somewhere, do it. There's sometimes that the people ask me why you are still in Minnesota. And there's a lot of things that offer for you to, to go somewhere else and, and take that offer. And I said, I made a promise to God by His grace, by His grace, I can be endure whatever it takes, whatever it would be. I, I'm still here in Minnesota because the grace of God in me. Because I, I did not see mercy, not, 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 I did not just mercy, I didn't just see the mercy of God, because mercy is given, but I see the grace of God in me. Do you know that you are the grace of God? You are the one that God gave me. You are the grace of God. When I said that, having said that, we must be a testimony of grace, of becoming an evidence of grace. The believers are. We are living testimony of God's grace that who we are. I am the grace of God. That a living grace of God wanted to testify in this place. You are the grace of God. That you are a living testimony of grace of God. Brian, all of you, Valerie, Debbie, Kuya Peter, Jim, you are all the grace of God. So light, let that light shine. Let that grace shine to all men. Amen. How many of you said, I believe I'm the grace of God. You are the grace of God. Let's stand. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Here we are, Lord. We are the vessels. We are the vessels of grace. We are the living testimony of grace of God. Because we come here to know you more and more in our lives. We come here in this church not to be just having fellowship or whatever. Or just sing a song. 
or just to talk. But we are here, Lord, to find more of that grace in our lives. To see more of that grace. That grace that can free us. That grace that can free us from all this word that full of darkness. That grace that freed us from all sins. That grace that, that free us from death. As what you just said in your word. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. The gift of God is eternal life through grace. Lord, we stand for that truth. By grace, we are saved. And not by our words. By grace, we can sus be sustained. Because your grace is sufficient for our weaknesses. And it's made perfect for our weaknesses. So God, I just pray to help us to keep boasting on our weaknesses so that Christ's power make works in us. I just pray right now, Lord. Now we know and understand what this grace means, so we have to long for it. We have to, to see, become transparent in you, Lord. We don't need to hide. We don't need to pretend. We just simply who we are in you, Lord. We are the children of God. And what you have commanded, when we receive the mercy, we should embrace the grace. And the grace is for us to repent and to turn away from all sin and sin no more. As what you have said, Lord, when you forgive, you will remember it no more, all the things that we have committed against you. So let it flow today, Lord. Let the grace flow in, your, in the hearts of your people right now more and more. And just by simply understanding grace, we have the power to overcome all this darkness of this world. And we have the power to overcome all the words of the enemies. And we have the power to overcome all the deception that the enemy put in our mind. We have the power to overcome fears. We have the whole power to overcome sickness we have the power to overcome worriness anxiety all of these things that is unnecessary in life to live and to walk in grace is our power let it flow today to your people lord and let it be so that they will shine. So that this grace may be known to many people out there. That grace that people need above all. We don't need money. We don't need fame. We don't need, we don't need this power that people might want it in their life. We don't need all this acceptance. But what we need is your grace for us to live in peace, in joy, in love, with full of hope, eternal glory, hope of glory. I pray that you will pour out today to all of us that are here and people that are watching right now and listening via Facebook, via Zoom, and YouTube. Let it flow right now. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May He lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace that you may walk in the grace of God and that you may shine all over the world, wherever you go, whoever you people that you encounter with, that you will shine and that grace will see in you and through you. In Jesus Christ's name, amen and amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.
Can see.